Fair warning, this might make you want to quit Pokemon Go. Every site and app you've ever used has a lengthy terms of service you've never read and quickly scroll to the bottom of to agree and move on. But today we're going to read through one of them. Because Niantic, the developers behind Pokemon Go have changed the game's terms of service and there's kind of a lot in there. And it's important to know if you decline this new terms of service when you log into the game and are faced with the pop-up, it'll kick you out of Pokemon Go. <laughs> you can't play without agreeing to this. And because I'm not a lawyer, we're going to use this Doc Decoder and Niantic terms of service summary that I found on Reddit. So Thank you to the Reddit people for this. And generally speaking, this is what was changed in the terms of service. This is what you are agreeing to and a little bit about my opinion on it. For starters, your account can be terminated at any time without notice if you breach the terms, which means Pokemon Go basically reserves the right to like ban you if they find out you're cheating or breaking the rules. That makes sense. That's video game stuff. Here's the one that everyone is going crazy about. If you go into the official Niantic Terms of Service, underneath number one, Terms, there's this big block of bold text basically saying that, please be aware that section 13 contains provisions governing how to resolve disputes between you and Niantic. Among other things, section 13 includes an agreement arbitration. With okay, but the important part of the thing is this. You're basically waiving your right to participate in a class action lawsuit against Niantic or a class-wide arbitration. Over the years, a lot of things have happened due to Pokemon Go, players getting in car accidents or the 2016 or 2017 Pokemon Go Fest where players showed up, the game didn't work, lawsuits were filed against Niantic and they had to pay out. So they basically just put into the terms of service, if you agree to this and play our game, you can't sue us. We are invincible. And again, going back into the official terms of service, it says, unless you opt out of the agreement to arbitrate within 30 days, you will only be permitted to pursue disputes or claims and seek relief against us on an individual basis, not as a plaintiff or class member in any class or representative action or proceeding, and you waive your right to participate in a class action lawsuit or class-wide arbitration. And number two, you are waiving your right to pursue disputes or claims and seek relief in a court of law and to have a jury trial. They are literally signing your rights away to a trial by jury, <laughs> which is like, all right, <laughs> that's crazy. The nice thing here is the start of this, unless you opt out of the agreement to arbitrate within 30 days, which means when you click agree, you can technically opt out. I'm gonna put a screenshot on screen right now. Big shout out to Stephanie uh, Meth on Twitter who shared this. You send an email out to termsofservice at support.nianticlabs.com. The link for that or the email will be in the description. And then you can basically copy and paste this and just put your name in. So again, thank you to Stephanie and that's how you get out of that. Now there is something to be said about a gaming development studio or any company protecting themselves in their terms of service. Every company does it. It's why a terms of service exists. But this one is just crazy. <laughs> just giving up your right to sue them, basically, is kind of crazy. The crazier part is that they can just, they, they're allowed to do that. Like they can just put that in there and then people will mindlessly agree to it. And like, you lose that, right? Like that, that's the crazier part that this is even allowed. <laughs> like, wow. So know that that's a thing, but there is a solve there. There are no refunds for virtual goods or virtual products once purchased, which means if you buy things like raid passes, you cannot get a refund for it. I will say Niantic historically has been pretty decent at refunding players when like things don't work. Like when the raid pass glitch was happening and you would use a raid pass and it would disappear and you didn't get the raid. Typically, if you reach out to Niantic support, they will refund you for that. I, I'm assuming this is just basically them saying that like, we don't have to if we don't want to, basically. There's also something to be said here about the fact that this game constantly breaks, you know? And it's like, it's not Pokemon Go's fault that it's breaking, you know, let's be honest. Again, they are good about making right. Recently, there was an issue with, I think one of the GoFest raid days for Global, uh, and they're doing a makeup raid day. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they're not gonna stop doing that. They just don't have to. Niantic can employ mechanisms to detect and respond to cheating, including checking your device for unauthorized software. Cheating in video games is a very hard subject uh, and it's very hard to block and to ban. The fact that Niantic's solution here is, well, we're just gonna sign your right away to your privacy so that we can create technology to enter into your phone and search around your phone for unauthorized software. What does that mean? How far can they go? What can they and can they not search? They're literally allowed to log into your phone and look at what kind of software and stuff you have downloaded onto it. That is a, again, the fact that they're allowed to do that. And it, just because they put a line in a, in, a, in a clause in a contract 
That's crazy. Niantic is not liable for any damages or losses resulting from the use of the services. Make sense? Niantic can change or remove virtual money or virtual goods at any time without liability. Niantic owns the game, right? Like they create all of the assets. The monetary economy in the game isn't real. It's manufactured by them. So theoretically for them to be able to just go in and take things in and like, like move stuff around, like kind of makes sense. Like it's their game, right? The problem is, is that Players pay money, bro. Like pay money to do these things and get stuff. And the fact that they can just go in and take it away uh, without any liability, like without any reason, that's a little crazy. But again, it kind of makes sense. It's just a little unfortunate. I kind of flash back to uh, the black and white Qrim situation where players accidentally got the brand new black and white Qrim in their account from PVP and Niantic just went in, plucked the Qrim out and that was kind of the end of it. So it makes sense, but like, eh. Niantic can use your data for event features and may share it with third parties. I I am under the, uh, the uh, what would you say? The, the crowd of people who kind of thinks Niantic farms data and like, sells it. My whole thing with the remote raid pass nerf was they're not getting any of your location data if you're sitting at home playing using remote raid passes. So to nerf the remote raid passes forces you outside so that they can farm more of your location data. Killing the remote raid passes was the worst decision they've ever made, especially financially. It didn't make any sense to their investors. It didn't make any sense to their players. It made no sense. The only reason why it would make sense is if there was a master plan that they were working towards that remote raid passes were getting in the way of that is more profitable than what the remote raid passes were because they were very profitable. Niantic is a for-profit company and they've raised money. They have investors. They have to be profitable. It's how this works. So that didn't make any sense. So when that nerf happened, I was like, oh, dude, location data. Like they're definitely farming that and selling that. I will say like they have pretty much denied that at Every time, every time they've been asked, and like I've had conversations with 19 employees, they've had interviews and podcasts, and like overall, they don't farm your location data or your data. But with this new clause, they now can, and they can share it with third parties. By share, that means sell. So maybe this was part of the plan all along, if I wanna put my conspiracy hat on. Nerf the remote raid passes, let some time go by to let people sort of forget about it, release new terms of service, farm people's data now that they're out again walking around and sell it. That would be much more profitable than the remote raid passes would be because data is way more profitable than any sort of in-game sales. So from a business perspective, it would make a lot of sense to do this. Obviously from like a player and moral perspective, you know, we've got our opinions about it. What I just said is not confirmed, that's just my theory. But again, they now legally can do that. Niantic can refuse admission or remove you from events without refund for non-compliance with terms or misconduct. Hey man, frick around and find out, you know? Break the rules and get out like that. That makes sense. Niantic can use your likeness and data for promotional purposes without compensation. <laughs> this, as a content creator, as someone for the last decade who has built a brand and, and made my name and likeness my job and my career and I sell it, to pay my bills. The fact that me agreeing to their terms of service means that they can use pictures and videos of me in their promotional content and not compensate me for it is insane. That is literally like, that's like my career gone, you know? Not that they've ever really like, I don't work too closely with them in like for like paid opportunities and stuff, but the fact that they can just like pull my stuff and do it, you know, that that's, that's why, that's wild. And that's kind of like what you pay actors for or what you pay people for is using their likeness and their data for promotional purposes. Because promotional purposes, that's marketing. Companies have major marketing budgets to be able to pay for things like this. But now by agreeing to this clause, the players of Pokemon Go can be farmed for their likeness and farmed for their data in order to use for free marketing. That's wild, bro. How is that allowed? Sid, what are your thoughts as a content creator that they put this in the terms? I think that's shady. I have, I have more strong words, but I won't say them. Will you shady? I think it's shady. Shady it is. Thank you. Niantic is not responsible for third-party websites or resources linked through the services. That makes sense. You know, they don't own they don't own uh, Pokemon Go Hub, right? So if like Pokemon Go Hub does some crazy stuff, like they're not responsible. Makes sense. You assume all risks associated with attending or participating in events. Fair enough. I feel like you know, like. It's kind of how it is. When you go to an event, you definitely always like sign your life away at events. That's like anything though, not just Pokemon Go. 
that. Niantic can change event features or cancel events without compensation. You can pay for an event. You pay your real world money for an event and they can just cancel it and not pay you back. What? This is a digital game. There are no, nothing's tangible. It's all fake. How can you not refund that? Oh my God, she just ran into a wall because this is so crazy. Again, that's crazy just because that th this game is so expensive to play. It is not a free to play game. It is really expensive. Tickets, you have to pay for tickets to play events. And then you have to pay for things like raid passes, incense, lucky eggs, you buy add-ons that give you extra bonuses and features. This is a really expensive game. But again, there's no tangible goods. So if Niantic sells you something that is fake, and you, it doesn't work, it breaks or it's canceled and they have to refund it, they don't lose anything tangible. Sure, there's man hours and there's server power on the back end, but that's not like losing a tangible. Well, I guess it is, maybe. I don't know, dude. The fact that like I can buy a GoFest ticket and then they can just cancel the event and keep the money is nuts. <laughs> That's nuts. Niantic can employ security measures and searches at events and refusal may result in denied entry. Makes sense. Niantic can terminate inactive accounts after a period of inactivity. This one kind of sucks, uh, but it makes sense because inactive accounts just kind of take up server space. But the reason why this sucks and the reason why I think this is so bad for the game, I, and I mean, like, like, God, man, I want to love this game, you know? I do love this game. The game's great. It's just the decisions made over the last three years are shockingly poor. Niantic can terminate inactive accounts after a period of activity. Why would they do this? Inactive accounts take up server space and server space costs money. This saves them money. This is a financial decision, probably to offset the raid passes. Wink, wink, just bring those back, fixes everything except for the data that they're farming. The reason why I think the, the account termination is the worst idea ever is because as someone who plays Pokemon Go and makes YouTube content on Pokemon Go, all the time, I have people coming up to me in person or commenting on videos, hey, I quit for four years, five years, three years, and I just got back into the game. I saw an ad, my friend started playing, my kid picked it up again, my wife started playing. Dude, so many people have come up to me and, and basically said or commented said that they quit for a long time and they came back to the game. Pokemon Go is a great game because it's not something you need to play every single day. You can pick it up, play it for a couple of months or a year, put it down, come back a year or two later. It's like Clash of Clans and Clash Royale. Like it's just like a never ending, always updating. There's always new stuff game. So you can always pick it up and put it down. This is a crazy decision because so many players don't play for a while and then come back. So to basically destroy the possibility of players being able to come back, that's gonna like kill someone's motivation to play. They're not gonna play if their old account and all their progress is gone. The question is how much time has to go by before the account is terminated? Is it a year of inactivity? It is, is it five years? You know, at what point makes sense? And I'm sure they have data on the back end that's showing them, okay, players over five years without inactivity have like a 5% return rate. So it makes sense for us mathematically to delete accounts after five years because 5% 5 of people coming back is makes us less money than the server space that it's taking up, right? So I'm sure there's a calculated decision. I hope there's a calculated decision. This is too big of a company to not do that kind of math. So if that math exists, that's fine. But it's just like, man, I hope they did math on this and I hope it is like 10 years of inactivity with like a 5%, 2%, 1% return rate, delete those accounts, call it a day because if it's if it's like not that much time that goes by, it's gonna, I don't know. This is, that's just a weird, makes sense. I hope there's math. Niantic can use your data for emergency notifications and public event leaderboards. Going back into the whole like Niantic being able to use your data, again, they have denied again and again and again that they use and sell your data, but they might've been doing that up until this point where now they have all of the legal rights to do so. So anytime this terms of service states that they can use data of yours, like it's just a red flag. I will say, um, the public event leaderboards. Okay, dude, I came from Clash of Clans, right? I came from Clash of Clans. The most fun thing for me in Clash of Clans was pushing up the leaderboards as a lower town hall. I was like a town hall eight, town hall 10 was the max town hall. I was an underdog and I got up into the top 200. It was crazy, you know? So public event leaderboards is something that like I have been asking for literally since this game came out in 2016. And I've always thought would be a really, really fun way to make the game competitive and it would just be so good. So the fact that we might have those in the future, that's really exciting. The fact that it comes at the cost of all of our data, 
doesn't feel like it's reasonable. Niantic is not liable for any damages resulting from third party services affecting your use of the services. Makes sense. They don't own Verizon. If it goes out, it's not their fault. Niantic can refuse. Well, you know, there is a thing to be said about like if they're hosting a huge event and they don't prepare accordingly, but they've been really good about that and all of the in-person events lately have been fantastic. Niantic can refuse admission or remove minors from events without a parent or guardian. Okay, that makes sense. I guess, you know, like if you're a kid, they're like wandering around, like they don't want to be liable for that, you know, like where's your parents? Niantic can use your feedback and analytic data collected during beta programs without compensation. So this is like one or two things. Uh, play testing exists where developers pay people to play a video game and give feedback and to collect data. Um, but also two gaming development studios will put betas out so that the public can play it and like give feedback and the developers can collect data. Um, and then, you know, use it to improve the game. So there's like two sides of that, but it, it makes sense. Niantic can change or remove any virtual money or virtual goods without liability. That's insane. So if you bought like 100 Pokecoins and they sink the value of Pokecoins, like, so what? That's another thing that we've been saying a lot in Pokemon Go over the last couple of years is like the value of things have kind of gone down, primarily when talking about the boxes, the uh, special boxes in the shop. But it shows that they're not, you know, they're fine with letting the value in game sink. So, you know, if they can, they can change or remove any virtual money or virtual goods without liability. This also means that if you buy Pokecoins, they can technically just remove them from your account without having to pay you back for them. Not that they'd actually do this, you know, or they would like maliciously do this towards people, but it gives them the right to in case there's a situation. And again, remember, you can't sue them, so. There's that. Niantic can use your data for demonstration, promotion, and advertising of services. This is again, this for, for advert, this is basically saying that Niantic can take your data, they can farm data off of you in all of these creative different ways, and then use that to demonstrate certain things to shareholders, potential investors, promote the game to these people or advertising. Advertising of services, like that's literally like them taking your data and using it to like raise money for their company. Like they're like profiting off of that, you know, or selling advertisers on advertising space in Pokemon Go, making billions of dollars, probably millions, hundreds of millions maybe, um, off of advertising without having to compensate anybody for the data that they're using to make that money with. So just more verbiage that's basically like Niantic's taking your data and gonna be using it to like make money. So Niantic can terminate your account for suspected fraud, cheating, or misuse of content uh, or services. This makes sense. Like they can, they can ban you. And then on this summary, it goes into some other points. Niantic can modify the terms at any time and continued use implies acceptance of changes, which means they can always change the rules of these terms and always add in more verbiage that gives them more power, essentially. You must use the services at your own risk and be aware of your surroundings. Certain country specific terms apply, blah, 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 blah. And then there's some perks here at the bottom, some green thumbs up, which we do like. You can opt out of the arbitration agreement within 30 days. So again, send that email, I'd recommend it. It also says down here, Niantic respects intellectual property rights and complies with the DMCA process. This is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which basically is like protecting people with copyrighted work. So in all technicality, I'm pretty sure the DMCA uh, Act like protects me and other content creators from Niantic just like ripping our videos uh, and using it to profit off of, because technically our videos are copyrighted under YouTube terms, I think. I don't know, there's so many freaking terms of service. But the, the, I don't think it has anything to do with your data. So the fact that they, uh, you know, the fact that they comply with the DMCA process, I'm not sure if that makes a huge difference for individuals. And that's what's going on with the brand new Niantic terms of service for Pokemon Go. It's kind of crazy. Now, my opinions were a little bit harsh just because I've played this game for eight years and I'm pretty frustrated with the developers as a whole right now. So you may have seen something different in here that I didn't that's more positive. If you did, please share it down below or share your total unfiltered opinions as well. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Oh my God, see you in the next one.